Hey guys, I planned a bunch of trips last year and I came up with my own ways of uh, setting up my itinerary and this is how I did it. So the first thing I do is I go find a place where I want to go and uh, for example, like last year, I knew I wanted to uh, ride the southern tier and so my final destination was uh, Florida. Second thing I do is I figure out if there are already maps that are available for you to purchase or for me to look for online. Uh, so for the southern tier I knew there were a set of maps that Adventure Cycling Association had online for sale. Uh, as well as knowing that a lot of cyclists uh, travel across this route a uh, thousand times over. In the case where a few cyclists have gone, like my trip from Denver, Colorado to Rapid City, I would use tools like a ride with GPS. So from here, I log in and I, I log in with my Facebook account. And then you just go into plan and once you get to the plan section, you uh, type in your start location. So it's going to be uh, Denver, Colorado for me here. Hit go. And yes, for the start point. And then for the first leg, we're going to try to go to Boulder, Colorado. And hit yes for the end point. And so the great part about Ride with GPS, it selects the best bicycle route um, possible between two points. And from here, you can actually modify the route by dragging and dropping the route lines. And uh, the great part about this is that it creates turn-by-turn cue -turn, um, sheets or turn-by-turn uh, -turn instructions. So you'll have to save it first. And once you're saved, you go back to uh, view the map, but not in edit mode. And there should be a section that lets you print the cue sheet. You hit print. And then when you go into the print sen settings for my machine, which is a Mac, you um, select um, layout. You select uh, four pages, print four pages into one. And also select the uh, way it prints from top to bottom and back to the top right to the bottom. Uh, there's a reason why I do this. It's because I can fold the paper uh, a certain way. So when I refer back to it on the bike, it's easier and simpler to uh, look at the cue sheets without fumbling around with the pieces of paper. And so here is the sheet of paper printed into four different sections and I'll show you how I fold it here. So you basically fold it into four pieces, really simple, uh, horizontal and vertical. And then you uh, fold it, only refer to the page one and page two, so you just flip it around and then you fold it reverse to go to page three and page four, so it's just only one fold just to refer to your directions. The other cool thing about Ride with GPS is that it allows you to export the GPX files instantaneously to um, devices like your Garmin GPS. Since I no longer use my Garmin, um, I just basically have this for any of my participants or partners who are on the trip that do use a device. Another tool that I use is strava.com so you log in with your account here and then from here go to explore local and once you're in local it'll give you all the local location that has bike routes so I select boulder bike the little bike icon and you'll see that there's a lot of different routes that's already been um, commonly used by cyclists in the area. So you can actually use a lot of this for your route planning because you'll know that these routes have been tried and true and should be fairly, fairly safe uh, for your uh, ride through. 
Once I know the total distance of the entire route, I would back that out and figure out the time frame that I want to finish the route. And so with that, I would figure out the average miles per day and have everything saved in Google Sheets uh, in Google Docs, which is out in the cloud. So I have a backup copy, uh, as well as uh, having the capabilities to share the sheet with someone or um, I would have a local copy on my iPad when I'm traveling so I can refer back to the itinerary or I can uh, edit it and then whenever I get internet access, I can update it on the go. So you fire up Google Spreadsheets, enter the total mileage here. Let's just say the southern tier is about 3,000 miles. And then after that, you enter the days, which is your desired amount of days you want to travel. So for three months, that's 91. And you figure out the average miles per day here. And that's an easy calculation of, you know, your total mileage divided by days. And uh, you actually move the decimal point back so it kind of estimates it to whole number. And the reverse is true. You can actually try to uh, figure out um, based off of uh, how many, if you want to increase your miles by day, you can just put that in a value here first. Or actually, let's put in the 3,000 miles here and then put in the value of average miles a day that you think you're going to be traveling and try to figure out how many days it would take. So you divide the total mileage by the average miles per day to get how many days so we come out with 50 days which is a difference of 41 days really so we can actually finish the southern tier in about two months if we wanted to if we were riding 60 miles every single day but of course that was not the case we definitely uh, you got to give room for uh, variances so some days aren't going to be or close to 60 miles average I think we average for this trip around 45 50 miles a day instead. And to further calculate your days out, you can actually figure out um, when your end date would be. So you just put in March 23rd, 2017, which is our start date. And we basically take that value and add it the 41 days that it would take for us to, let's just say 41 days that it would take for us to complete. So for this scenario, it would end at May 3rd. Um, so that's a really easy way to kind of know roughly when your trip will end. And then from that point on, you can change the start date to kind of see where that flows out for you. Uh, so it's very quick and easy in terms of uh, quickly figuring out when you want to start and when you would like to end. So those different levers you can change. So once I determine my average mile, I use that to build my itinerary by creating a new sheet here and from that point on I enter the start date and so we do use March 23rd 2017 and then the end date which we'll figure out later and then the cost per day and then estimated cost actual cost here remaining budget and total mileage for the trip so we just expand it out a little bit more and then create the table so we'll have one column that has day the date the start this is the start location the end end location and then we throw in miles here and then accommodations the price for the accommodations and it's confirmed so expand out so you can visually see things we're going to create a heading bold it and some underlines to indicate it that's a heading so it's visually uh, easy to, to identify so for day you put in one two here select both one and two and drag the bottom right box so that it automatically um, calculates the number of days 
uh, for your trip. So it would be day number one all the way down to day number 17 here. And of course, for the first day, we just take, we hit equal and uh, select, you know, the day one, the start date, which is our March 23rd, 2017. So it's automatically populated. And the second day two, you just take the day one plus one and then drag the little bo bottom box out to calculate the remaining number of days automatically for you. So you don't have to go through and enter that manually. And then for the end date, what I do is I put a formula, I take the, um, really the, the start date minus one, you want to include that date, plus the maximum of this uh, number of days, the column A, which is A here. So basically that would be 17. So the end date matches with the end date of um, the table. And then cost per year per day, I take that and just do an estimate, say I want to spend $40. And then I take that amount and I times it by also the maximum of column A, which is the number of days. So 17 days times 40, we're looking to spend about $680 for accommodations alone. A remaining budget is really the difference between estimated and actual costs. And actual costs get the sum of this column, G. And total mileage is ca calculated by doing the sum of column E, which is our miles. So it's a total of all the miles we've traveled once we start entering those. And uh, accommodations, I like to stretch out the field so I can enter more information to read. So this is like my hotels or camping. And then, for example, the start date. We're going to say we start San Diego, California, and end it over at Alpine, California. And then what I do is I do a formula for the start. I just send it to equal to like the previous end date. And I copy that and paste it all the way through the end of this column here. And so what you do, what happens is when you enter an end date, it automatically populates your start date for the next day. And for scenarios where you have a zero day where you're taking a break, you just enter the same city again. And it'll automatically do it for you. And of course, you put the zero for mileage that day. And then enter your mileage uh, for your trips. So for San Diego and Alpine, it's 45 miles. Alpine to boundary, we'll just, we'll just say 56. Of course, this isn't the real numbers. I'm just throwing this as, a, as an example. And then obviously, you can just keep on entering the El Centro, Glamis. Um, you know, this is all on top of my memory. So these are just sample mileage, 25, 68. And then you'll see that the total mileage is changing to uh, sum that up. And you can double check by looking at the sum at the bottom right of the sheets there. And then enter uh, your price for like accommodation. So I, we want to make sure that that's in dollars. Uh, so you're able to kind of format that all in dollar figures. And then, yeah, enter, yeah, $2 for Alpine if it was a, or 24 for Alpine if you wanted to use that as an example, you know. Uh, just enter all various amounts. Uh, and if you're not, can't, if you have a zero day you don't pay for, it, then you put zero. So it's really simple. And from that point on, you'll see that the uh, actual cost gets increased. And um, oh, one other thing, I want to format the date to include the day of the week. So you go down here to format number and go to more formats and select the one that has that format. So the three digit day of the week and then the, you know, month, day, year. And uh, we'll continue and we enter in the accommodation information. So just like Camp Alpine, that's fictitious, of course. Um, and I just enter that information so that when you come back to this itinerary, you know where uh, you're going to be staying for the night. And uh, I also entered the phone number. So if we need to make and call for reservations. We can do that. And uh, yeah, you just basically do that and make sure you uh, wrap, wrap the field. And then for confirm column, this is basically for me to indicate whether it's confirmed or not. So I create another sheet and put Y and N for yes and no. And what I do is I do data validation on this field. 
So you click here, you put, click on data, data validation, and uh, list from range, and then click on that, and uh, select the sheet again, and select those two fields so that only those two values can be used on that field. And then you'll see there's a drop down. You can select yes or no. And on top of that, you can even um, essentially do conditional formatting. If it's a yes, it's a green and it has to be exactly uh, Y. And then if it's a no, you basically it's a um, red is really what I want to change that into. And you just select the default colors for that. And it's test it out and that looks pretty good. And so by default, you want to have everything be no. So what I do is I copy, change it to no, and then I copy and I paste it for all the records. So it's no initially. And so after you select yes for your confirmation that you have a reservation, it should turn green. And of course, you could change the start date around just to see how the end date flows out, uh, what the date looks like. It'll change that. You could change the cost per day to see if you want to go cheaper, $20 a day, and see how your budget looks. You, it automatically calculates based off of all that information. So um, this is really convenient and very easy to build for uh, your own use. So um, the other thing I do is I highlight the start and cost per day just to let me know that I can change those values just to play around with the, the data. So another thing I like to do uh, after I'm done with this, I would want to freeze these rows uh, from the header all the way up to the top. So I have that information on top. So you do that by going to view, freeze, and then freeze up to the current row. And that gives you an ability to scroll through all your days without you know taking away from the top and then I also like to highlight and uh, fill in the background for certain states so if you're crossing different states you can visually see like the number of uh, stops you're going to be uh, looking at so like for example California this is all green and while you're scrolling down this list you'll notice like the color coded so that you can visually see uh, where you're going to be at a certain day here is a sample of my Southern Tier sheet that I actually use. So it's uh, slightly different from what I've shown you, but I do have the, some elements that uh, I explained from the from when I was creating the sample itinerary. I do have the color coded. I do have that confirm column, um, and then I cross out every day whenever I go through each day. And then um, the top, it's a little different, but I kind of made my improvements uh, based off of this. And as you can see, it gives you total mileage and total price down there. I kind of figure it's better to have that information on the top rather than the bottom. There really isn't much difference from what I showed you. So um, kind of let you know what the, how I use this in real life. So that's how I create and use my itinerary. Um, if you have anything similar or, or something that you use uh, to do your trips, uh, indicate below in the comments. Um, I would love to hear back from you if you have anything I can uh, use on my own uh, preparations. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Uh, make sure you subscribe for more bike touring information in the future. And until next time, make sure you get out there and discover your ride.